Hey there everyone, Atesh here, back again with another video and welcome to another video. We're continuing with our series of React Native. We're trying to build a lot of mobile apps so that they can act as your portfolio and you can become an amazing mobile app developer. And of course, this entire series is sponsored by Hashnode, the amazing platform to share your learnings and share things with other people. Go ahead and write amazing articles there. There are amazing people. So let's go ahead and continue. In the last video, I showed you that what is something that we are going to build. It's a currency converter. I gave you it as an assignment that, hey, try it on your own if you can. Otherwise, I'll surely provide you with all the assets as well as how it is going to be built up. So in this video, we'll be doing exactly that. I'll be breaking it into two videos, this one and the next one. In this one, we'll set up the things and we'll see that how this is strategized. And in the next video, of course, we'll be just finishing up the app. So hope you're excited for that and we'll be doing exactly the same. Let's move on. So this is our app. Uh, that is what we have. Now, first and foremost, what we're going to do is let's create a new folder here and we're going to go ahead and call this one as SRC uh, source, all keeping all the source at same. And we'll just move this app.tsx into source. It will automatically move and relink all the files. That is really great. So update the imports. Yes, please so that all the import statements in the files like index.js, this is being updated and all of our app, wherever it is being moved, it updates that. Pretty simple, nothing, nothing too serious as of now. Now here we're gonna do a couple of things. Uh, first and foremost, we're gonna create an index file because we want to create an interface. Interface is a really cool concept in the term of uh, TypeScript, which provides a type safety as well. So this is something really cool. Let me show you first what we are going to do and then I'll explain you that uh, why it was necessary for that particular part. So right click, create a new file and call this one as index.d and .ts. Now this is going to be a simple, simple interface. Let me walk you through. Once I'll write the code, you'll understand that why we are doing. The whole idea behind doing it is to provide a structure for our app. Uh, and for our data types as well. Now, whenever we are making a button, it's not like we can create or we want to create any random button. This button should have specific properties that should be there. It's a currency conversion. The currency, we are expecting a flag to be there, a conversion rate to be there. So this is all what we are creating up here. So let's go ahead and create an interface. Let's call this one as currency. There we go. Now in this currency, we'll have just a few names. So this one will be name. So let's go ahead and call this one as simple string. Apart from this, we'll have a value, which will be a number. We expect a number associated with the currency. We also expect a flag to be there. You can also create a name for that again, uh, just like that. But we'll be going with the string and then we'll have a symbol as well. Symbol for currency symbol, nothing uh, much too complex there. So we'll have a string and that's it. That's our interface. Now, this will help us to not to deviate too much. And whenever we create a button, we can follow this interface and these properties are must to have in that. So that's the whole idea. And that is why the TypeScript is being used so that you can have type safety with your features. Okay, so this part is all done. Uh, we are super happy with this. Now we need to create some constants. Now, why constants? Let me show you that also. So right, right click, create a new file and we'll be calling this one as constants.ts of course, .ts and ts, there we go. I'll push this entire code on the GitHub as well so that you can grab all these constant. These are nothing. Uh, I'll show you some of them so that you can pause the video and place them. But I have just already copied a lot of them. What this is, this is a simple, simple constant that we have. Let me save this file. And there we go. So what it does, it is having a currency by rupee, which is a currency array. And in this array, we have a lot of objects. Each object has a name, for example, dollar. It's conversion value. So how much one rupee cost in dollars? and then a flag and then a symbol like dollar, euro, and we have a flag as well. So these are just uh, emojis that you can grab. Uh, you can just have a few of them. If you want all of them, you can take it from the GitHub repo of this entire course series. It's available freely on GitHub and you can check this out. So this is what we have. In case you want to have more or you want to deviate from it a little bit, be my guest, no problem at all. All right, so this is the constant that we have created and we can close this file again, really simple. We have just the constant, nothing, nothing too complex in this part. All right, now we're gonna learn that how we can create components. So far we have been working in just one file or something. Now what we're gonna do is simply create a button which will be a standalone component. And based on this file, because it has an array in it, we'll loop through this array from the constant and we'll be creating as many buttons. So later on in the future, if you add more objects in your array, you can automatically have those buttons. So for this, let's go ahead and create a new folder in the source. We'll call this as components, components. 
and inside the components we'll be creating a simple button component so let's create a new file and we'll be calling it as currency button or component currency button dot tsx because it's a component all right so we'll be having a react functional export uh yeah looks good decently good okay uh so what we're gonna do in this one is uh let's go ahead and create this one so this is exporting this nicely and everything uh what we'll be doing is let's keep this currency button as it is let's remove this function entirely and we have import react that is fine okay first let's talk about the import in the previous uh, video or the previous section of the app in case you remember we actually discussed a little bit about props with children that actually stops you from passing anything which looks like a string but actually a particular data type that is being passed on so we'll be importing that so if you remember this is how you import that import type this is oops props with children and there we go so this is what we need you can always avoid this but in case you want a hundred percent surety that whatever the data you are passing in this component that should be of some particular type then this is being used uh, we'll be needing some of the components from react native as well so we'll bring this one from react native and what we have here is uh, we'll obviously need view obviously text and style sheet as well so style sheet all right so this is good enough now first thing is we need to utilize this props with children so let's go ahead and declare this type here so we'll say type this will will be uh, simply uh, currency button props so what kind of props you can pass on in this button so we'll simply go ahead and say we'll use this props with children there we go and we'll be passing on a data type like this and inside this we'll pass on what is the minimum type that is expected in this one so we are saying that hey name should be there always and always so let's go ahead and say string and apart from this we'll have a flag now although i expect that the currency conversion or should be there also but i'm just showing you the example so that you can actually modify this or learn a little bit more on your own so uh, you get the idea that how this is being done now whenever we will be creating a component especially the component and we'll be passing on a props into it we'll be always passing on this currency button props as a prop into it really simple nothing complex in there all right let's go ahead and create this constant we'll be calling this one as currency button there we go now this currency button will be designed like this so we'll be calling it like this and here we'll be saying that hey you'll be receiving a props props there we go no not like that we'll be having a props the type of the props obviously the type will be borrowing it from here line number six copy this and paste it this is what we want and always this will be passed on now later on if you decide that hey i want to have all the four thing as a compulsory go ahead and be my guest that will be a better app in that case all right so further we are going to say that hey this will return something this entire component that will be a simple jsx dot element again typescript you can avoid that no problem at all using our classic arrow function and having this up here all right no problem at all this is super super simple now apart from this we'll also create a style sheet we won't be doing too much of styling in this we have already done an app for that but in this we'll just center align everything on the screen itself so that's all we'll be doing we'll be saying styles and that will be coming up from style sheet dot create there we go super simple super easy we'll keep it empty as of now but eventually we'll fill it let's come back up here into the currency button what is going to be here this is really really super simple of a button uh, we won't be doing too much in here first of all what i'm going to do is obviously i'll return i'll use this one so that i can return an element itself like this and i'll be saying hey let's go ahead and return just a view with each of this there will be a class associated i'm calling this as class but you can loosely say it as style sheet as well there is no problem uh, these are all same you you get the point you have been so long into the into the series with me so i think that is totally acceptable and we'll be saying hey let's go ahead and create a styles let's call this one as button container and let's go ahead and design this button container so in the button container uh you might have already guessed we are not going to do anything specific apart from centering the thing so button container you goes like this let's center anything so in this case remember the axes are different there are so many articles that people have written on the hash node about the same thing so i think this is now uh, all there not align content align items there we go and we'll be just putting it onto the center that's all told you the styling is not going to be too much into this case all right 
So we have this view, then we have two text Then we'll be putting up. So there we go. The first text is going to be simply, let's extract whatever is coming up from the props, but we have designed this prop. So we know there is 100%, there is a flag that is going to be coming up. So let's say props.flag. Uh, you can destructure it here as well, but this is a better idea because we are marking this as a data type here as well. So this one is a better approach in this case. And similarly, we'll be having a props name as well. So we'll be saying props.name. All right. Uh, let's put up some styles on this one as well. So we'll be copying uh, this, copy this and paste it up here. This one will be uh, simply a flag. And this one we can call this one as simply country. Uh, we won't be doing too much again into this one. Let's increase some font and a little bit like that. So no worries on that flag. Let's go ahead and put up some styling onto this one flag. Uh, let's bump up the font. So font size could be 28. Nice and easy. And what more color? Yes, of course. Let's go ahead and put up a color onto this one. Uh, we'll be going all white. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nice and easy. And a little bit margin from the bottom side since all will be butted up together. So let's uh, have some space. MB for margin bottom and uh, arbitrary number. Any number that you can use, uh, four is good enough. Similarly, we have this country. So let's go ahead and have this country. Again, nothing more. We can even copy paste this one. Uh, that would be good enough. So copy and paste this one. Font size, let's... 14 is good enough and uh, color uh, I have actually chosen a color for this one if case you have any color in mind go ahead and please use that no problem at all and uh, we don't need margin because this is the bottom most all right and that is it that is all the component that we want to create it so in this video it was really simple we first defined a data type that hey whenever you are passing me a currency these are the must have things we'll uh, write the code accordingly then we created some constants these constants are nothing these are currency type of an array since we have defined the type already. And now we can simply have this name, value, flag, and symbol. Uh, simply go ahead and create more objects like this in case you want to. Otherwise, uh, just pause the video and just grab all of this or you can grab everything from GitHub. This was the second step. The third step was to simply create a component. We have already discussed that when we create these kinds of uh, props with children, a type of data, then we simply cannot pass on anything into the props. It has to be certain type where we have defined it from line six number to line number nine. And there we go, we are returning just a component. Now in the next video, we'll see that how we can utilize flat list, which is a far more, uh, you can say more friendly component as well as more uh, performance based component. Whenever you have to loop through the values, uh, it has so much potential. I'll talk about that more and I'll show you the documentation as well in the next video. Hope you've enjoyed this, like this and subscribe to the channel in case you want to see more and I'll surely catch you up in the next video.